Warning, hidden danger in this approval of a Bitcoin ETF. Now, Bitcoin's price, it's breaking out. Big news of a pending Bitcoin ETF being approved any day now. And of course, when the Bitcoin price pumps like this, my phone, my email, they start getting filled up with old friends coming out of the woodwork asking me if now is the time to buy. So in this video, I'm gonna break it down. We're gonna look at what's going on with Bitcoin's price. What's driving this and hint, it's a lot more than just the ETF rumors. I wanna explain why there's danger with the ETF approval and what happens in the price that almost everyone has completely missed and what you need to be aware of. And we're also gonna look at what you should be watching and expecting from here. So let's go. All right, welcome to the channel. If you're new, my name is Mark Moss. I make these videos to change the way you think about money. This is a new form of money and you need to be thinking about this. Now, real quick, before I go through all of this, I just wanna say that I am looking for good people to come work on the team at Market Disruptors and help us disrupt markets around the world. If you're an operator, a content creator, an editor, a copywriter, <laughs> pretty much anything, we're looking for you. I'll put a link down below, onemarkmoss.com slash jobs, onemarkmoss.com slash jobs. There's a link down below. If you'd like to come work for the Market Disruptors team and you know beat this depression or recession in 2024, then check it out. There's a link down below. Come join the team. All right, let's talk about the price. Now, I think the price is one of the least important things, but let's take a look at it because the Bitcoin price just passed $40,000. Now, it's been uh, a while since we've seen that. As a matter of fact, I have this for you right here. This is what's known as a block clock. And basically, you plug it in, it hooks to your Wi Fi, and it tracks the price in real time. Uh, as you can see, the price says $47,000, and we're not there. Uh, this thing lost power. Um, I have a couple of them. This thing lost power, and it got stuck there. And I've said, I am not plugging this thing back in to get re updated until we cross this number. Uh, last time we were at this number was about March of 2022. So, uh, a couple months away from two years since we've got there, but here we go. We are up 67% since September. It was 25,000 just in September. 155% year to date since January. One of the best performing, actually the best performing asset in uh, 2023. Just for frame of reference, the S&P 500 is up 20%. NASDAQ's up 38%. I will say that NVIDIA, uh, the AI chip GPU manufacturer is up about 220%. A little bit better than Bitcoin, but it's not an asset class. It's an individual equity. Now, real quick, before I go into uh, why there's other reasons why the price is pumping, not just the ETF, but why there's actually danger with the ETF that you need to be uh, aware of, I just want to tell you real quick. When the price starts pumping like this, like I said, people start hitting me up from all over. But you'll also notice all across YouTube and social media, a lot of people start talking about Bitcoin too. They like to jump in and, uh, you know, go with the trend. But let me be clear, just real quick. I have done six, seven videos in just the last couple months. And let me just breeze through them. I'm going to link them all down below. In June of 2022, new data reveals the Bitcoin value. Should you buy now? It was at 19,000. The next month, July of 2022, do these charts show it's time to buy Bitcoin? The price was at 19,000. Then in October of 22, will Bitcoin go to 12,000 or 30,000 first? The price was at 18,000. 11 November 2022, the great reset of crypto is happening. Bitcoin price was at 16,000. January of 2023, I said data tells us it's time to buy. Bitcoin was at 20,000. Another video in January 2023, breaking data shows the Fed pivot is here, do this now, which I said to buy Bitcoin. That was in January, the price was at 16,700. In March of this year, 2023, I said Bitcoin is pumping, buy now or wait, the price was 26,000. And in May, I said that Fed data shows they control Bitcoin, what's next? And I showed that if you watch what the Fed's doing, you'll know when to buy, price was at 26,000. All right, so that's a bunch of videos in a short period of time. I am not jumping on the bandwagon in here. I'm here for the long haul. All right. Now, what I was talking about with the Fed telling us when to buy Bitcoin is because it's global liquidity that's really the main driver of these markets right now. Now, there's obviously massive utility and a lot of it's being driven in third world countries. Africa, for example, 80% of transactions under $1,000 are being done there. Of course, Central America, El Salvador, now potentially Argentina are adopting this for other reasons, but it's really global liquidity that's driving the markets. And so while everyone's looking at the Fed and going, well, the Fed's tightening, the Fed's tightening markets, how could the markets be going up? You wanna look at the global 
M2, the global monetary supply. I have a chart up on the screen. And as you can see, as the global M2 goes up, the price of Bitcoin tracks that. Now, why would we be looking at global money supply and not just the US global supply? Well, it's because Bitcoin is a global asset. All right. So you have to think bigger than just the United States. People say, but what about regulation in the United States? It's bigger than just the United States. Now, the other thing that we're seeing because of this massive monetary expansion, massive global inflation and uh, basically runaway central bank uh, spending, what we're seeing is a flight to hard assets all over the world. Gold just broke out to a new all time high, never been above 2000. Here we are, of course, here we are talking about Bitcoin, but even stocks. I've been talking about stocks uh, continuing to go up. You know, Michael Burry says sell. I keep saying no, it's not time to sell. Stocks are doing good. I already gave you that. Real estate is back up to all time highs. And that's because people are realizing they don't want fake financialized US dollar denominated assets or any other fiat currency for that matter. And so hard assets, real hard assets are doing good. Now, there's lots of drivers uh, of the value besides the Bitcoin ETF, but let's talk about that for a minute. So lots of rumors of the ETF approval. I've talked about it, you've heard it uh, plenty at this point. So let me tell you what you haven't heard. Uh, first of all, yes, there's, an, there's many Bitcoin ETFs that could launch by the year's end. There's at least nine asset management firms that have proposals in at the SEC to get them converted. BlackRock, which of course is like a semi quasi arm of the government, you know, uh, they'll probably get that approved. Wisdom Tree, Valkyrie, plenty of others. They're waiting for the SEC to approve this spot Bitcoin ETF. And the next deadline for the SEC to decide on a spot Bitcoin ETF is January 1st. So the demand is going way up. Everyone thinks that the world, you know, is going to rush in as soon as this ETF is approved. And the supply is very tight. Nobody wants to sell. Why would they when they're anticipating higher prices? The Bitcoin holders, they don't appear to have any interest in selling into the strength of Bitcoin's price. A lot of people think as soon as the price goes up, they'll sell. But what we can see is the exact opposite. The amount of Bitcoin in circulation that hasn't moved in over one year is at a new all time high. As a matter of fact, over the weekend, we saw it hit the all time high of 70.5%. 70% of all the Bitcoin has not moved in over a year. That's long term holders. Now, this increases the lack of liquidity in the circulating supply, the amount that's available for sale. Now, of course, this creates a positive feedback loop on an increasing asset price because it takes less net new dollars to move the price upwards in the future. Of course, supply and demand. Now, I don't think I've ever seen an asset this large, about 800 billion right now, have such high illiquidity at the same time that the price is aggressively moving forward. But I want you to be prepared for a possible pullback. This is something that you need to be wa watching because I believe this Bitcoin ETF, if or once it's approved, will be one of those buy the rumor, sell the news events. What does that mean? People are buying now on the rumor that it will get approved. Once it finally does, the news breaks, I think the price could come down. Why is that? Well, if the SEC approves one of the many spot Bitcoin ETFs that are out there, as a matter of fact, what I think is gonna happen is it won't just be one that gets approved, it'll probably be at least four or five getting approved at one time. Many of them have a, almost the same sort of setup. They're using the same Coinbase as custody, et cetera. And I don't think it would be fair for the SEC to just give one of them the approval, maybe BlackRock. Uh, my guess is probably there's four or five that get approved at the same time. And so when that happens, I think there will be a very quick pop in the price, but then I think we could see a very sharp sell-off after this initial pop happens. It's gonna confuse everybody and everybody's gonna wonder what the heck is happening. And so I wanna warn you in advance, again, buy the rumor, sell the news. Now there's a ton of money coming in right now to buy this because like I said, they think as soon as these ETFs gets approved, then everyone's gonna start buying the ETFs and the ETFs will go out and have to buy all this Bitcoin off the exchanges, which there's hardly any left, as I already gave you the numbers. And that would cause the price to go up. But here's the thing, here's what nobody's talking about. I haven't seen one person talking about this. What they don't understand is that these big ETFs like BlackRock, they're not gonna go out and buy billions of dollars of Bitcoin 
because they already have. You see, these big ETF companies cannot be buying and selling in the market on a real-time basis, moving market prices. So instead, they use a buffer account. I covered it in a video before. Uh, BlackRock and some of these other ETFs have already been buying to fill these accounts. These other accounts will be used to fulfill the buying and selling on a daily basis, while these other accounts will be managing it on market cycles so they can get the best deal and that they're not moving the market. All right, so a lot of people think they're gonna instantly start buying and it's gonna push the price sky high, but that's not what's gonna happen because they've already bought it. And so when that doesn't happen, the price will start coming down because of all these people buying just on this pump alone. And when they see it start going down, it'll trigger some more selling and people are gonna freak out and they'll start going down, all right? But this is only a short-term thing. This is going to, the ETFs will lead to a very long, steady, long-term demand. Not immediately, but it's going to happen. So I don't think there's enough long-term buyers to offset the amount of dumping that could happen on the back of an ETF. However, I don't think you should wait for this either because while I do think there will probably be a sell-off after the ETF gets approved, it may not drop below the price that it is today. All right, we know there's gonna be massive long-term demand, just not immediately, not day one, because as I said, they've already bought it. But we can see the Wall Street machines, they're already ramping up. They're already training the brokers on what it is and how to get their clients into it. As a matter of fact, According to a recent NASDAQ survey, nearly 72% of financial advisors say they would be more likely to invest into crypto if the SEC approves a spot ETF. So once it's approved, 72% of financial advisors would tell their clients to buy. So if we see an ETF approval relatively quickly and then it's followed by a quick pump, and then a dump, do not sell your Bitcoin into that dump. Don't do it. Don't let go of your Bitcoin into weak hands. Again, do not sell your Bitcoin, just hold on. Now, if you do see that, it's not gonna last long in my opinion. It's gonna be sort of a sucker shake off, right? They're gonna try to get the weak hands out of that. And I think it could be one of the very last opportunities for you to get those weak hands Bitcoin to move over to you. So I wanna use these pullbacks as an epic buying opportunity. So the question is, should you buy now or should you wait for that pullback? Like I said, we don't know if it's gonna pull back below where it is today. My guess, probably not, but you don't have to guess. So you can either one lump sum buy or you can dollar cost average, meaning you can buy over time. So let me give you some numbers. If you would have dollar cost averages with just $10 into various assets every day since January 1st of 2020. So you put $10 into different assets every day since 2020, January. Bitcoin would be up 101%. You would have doubled your money. NASDAQ would be up 28%. S&P 500 would be up 18%, gold would be up 16%, and treasury bonds would be down negative 20%. So what you wanna do is you wanna think long-term. If you um, have money that you wanna put into Bitcoin, now is probably a good time to do that. If you're unsure of what's gonna happen with the markets, then you may wanna hold some back and dollar cost average in. But either way, enjoy the fun on the internet. It's gonna be fun, but I would say don't try to outsmart the market. Just take a position, think about where it will be in years from now, not days or weeks from now. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments down below. Of course, as always, give me a thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't, but at least tell me why. And if you wanna recession-proof your income for 2024, maybe you wanna come work for the Market Disruptors team. There's a link to the jobs down below, onemarkmoss.com jobs. Come join the team. That's what I got to your success. I'm out.